damn knucklehead and idiot is supposed to rub it on. Not preach it. That dream. again, so it seemed a good chance to drop in, have a wee chat. Mm. What's this? New huts. You're building new huts. You haven't even told them yet. Now, oh, hold on, Robert, hold on. This isn't as simple as you think it is. I warned you, sir, the last time. Robert, please. You keep part of it. I assure you, Robert, that the Chief and I have had very good talks, splendid talks. Now, just leave it to me. I made it quite clear. I laid it on the line. You go on burying your reverend head in the sand, and you're sure as hell gonna get a tidal wave up your reverend backside. Just give me a little more time, Robert. I promise. There isn't any more time. Here, yeah, God, don't you understand the English language? Well, that's it. From now on, I'm gonna take charge. I'm gonna settle this whole mess up once and for all. Come on, John. Greetings. Jumbo. Jumbo. Good morning, Chief. Welcome. I bring you the greetings of the government. Welcome the men of the government. Well, let's get down to it, Chief. You know me, Chief Ahulu. You know you can trust me. We've met many times in the past, and we're good friends. But this is a day for serious talking. What's he say? He says if the talk's to be serious, he'd like it to be in his own dialect. John, take over. Tell him about the dam. Tell him that in less than one moon, water will come seeping into the village and soon the whole place will be flooded. Now explain to him what a dam means. Understand dam. Yeah, but do you really understand? It's not just a village, Chief. This whole valley, as far as the eye can see, this way and every way, miles and miles of it. And when it's finished, it won't just be up to your belly button. It'll be high, hundreds of feet high above your head. He, he, does he understand that? Oh, yes, it's been explained to him. He understands. <coughs> the government is going to... <coughs> Tell him that the government is going to take care of him and his people. Tell him they're to make one day's march to the big clearing by the river, and there they're to be taken by aeroplanes to the land of the Mdula. Understand the aeroplanes. Yeah, good, good. And <clears throat> tell him that the land has already been prepared, that it is good land, and maize and yams have been planted in it. Tell him we've even put up huts for all his people, and that for him there's a great hut twice as big as the one he's got now. So, for you, we are to Belaware. I didn't look one to so. I didn't look at that. I'm all in your long new. I did look when I go as you know, keke to so right. I need to be less so bearful. He says to thank you very much for the new village and the aeroplane, but that they have been talking about this thing for many days. And since they cannot take their animals in aeroplanes, they have decided to stay where they are. 
He says that they are God's people and God will look after them. And listen to me, Chief Uhuru. I have been speaking to you as a man. Now I speak to you as the government and I tell you, you've got ten days. Ten days, Savvy, in which to pack up and clear out. Oh, it's like beating your head against a great wall. You can't live here anymore. Nobody can live here anymore. It's going to be all water. And I'm not going to leave you here to drown. I'll be back in ten days and listen to me. When I come back, I'll have soldiers with me. What the hell's going on now? Well, they found someone in the river. <laughs> Yes. Julie, John and I have to be in Anjari before dark, but if you'll get him stitched up quickly, we'll strap him in a stretcher and put him down to the government hospital in Rumi. Eh? I'm afraid he can't be moved. Well, if you think you can manage it. Eh? Oh, I can manage. Look, you hurt Father's feelings back there. Why don't you go and smooth them down a little? I'll be with you as soon as I can. He deserved to be hurt. He promised me his dog collar weeks ago he'd get them going. It's a hell of a lot of fun being engaged to you. And remember, Chief, I'm serious. I want the whole jing bang of year out of here immediately after Christmas. What's your name? Julie. I never had a girl named Julie before. You shouldn't be sitting up. How long have I been here? Since this time yesterday. How do you feel? Horrible. I'm not surprised. I sewed 15 stitches in that head of yours. You're the doctor? <laughs> no, but sewing's my hobby. Incidentally, where is he? You're in the mission dispensary at the village of Morocco. You've got a broken head, a cracked ankle, and I'm making you a cup of beef tea. It just about brings you up to date. Oh, yes, and I shaved you this morning. Well, I'm sorry I missed that. Like they say, what is a chick like you doing in a joint like this? I help my father. He's a missionary. You mean you live here all the time? Mm-hmm. How'd I come by this? Have me christened? It belongs to my father. I'm afraid it's a bit on the short side. How'd I get inside it? Well, I do everything around here. Well, that must have been educational. How did I look? Wet and dirty. Where'd you find me? Where would I expect to find Moses? In the bulrushes. How do you know my name? Well, I couldn't very well miss it. It's in big red letters three feet high. They found my wagon? Yes, they've just pulled it up from the river. They've probably gone all through my stuff, my bag. Where's my bag? I've got to get that. Down! Oh, my. Here, lean on me. Now, try not to put any weight on that foot. Oh! Oh. oh! I want you to stay on that bed. Yes, ma'am. You've got a fever. Yes, ma'am. I want you to be a good boy. You're my star patient. I never sewed 15 stitches before. Not in one head. And you're going to stay right there until I get ready to take them out. And that won't be for at least a week. You're going to drink your beef tea, and above all, behave yourself. Yes, ma'am. Let's see. What's it say? Mm, you'll live. What do you want me to bring you from the wagon? My bag. Black leather medical bag. Oh, of course. Dr. Moses. 
Hey. I just remembered your name's Julie. Right. Hello, Julie. My name's Joe. Hello, Joe. Go, Morango! Dr. Moses muscle tonic. I want three women to clean the inside. Bahamu, Wanawaki Tatu, Kwasati Sandani. There. Ask the chief. Is this what you wanted? I buy you, honey, all the way. What's your bride price? How many? Afford it. Besides, I'm engaged. Oh, you are? Who's the lucky fellow? The man with the helicopter you wouldn't ride in. Who, the cop? He's not a cop. He's the district officer. What's the difference? They all smell like police. Well, what are you waiting for? Why don't you get married? My father says, uh, all in God's good time. Paul says it is better to marry than to burn. Corinthians 2, verse, uh, forget it. I'm not burning. You're not, huh? Well, honey, it's high time you were. It's high time you went to sleep. Is that why you didn't want to go with Robert? Because he's a cop? No, I just wanted to stay with his girl. Why did you let me stay? There are some things about myself I don't understand. À quel hôtel descendrez-vous à Paris? À l'hôtel de Ritz, monsieur. À l'hôtel Ritz, monsieur. C'est connu dans le monde entier, l'hôtel Ritz. C'est connu dans le monde entier, l'hôtel Ritz. I think I'd better warn you. You'll find the Ritz expensive. <laughs> Just brushing up on my French. Oh, really? Have they announced the next flight to Paris? Wrong airport. I'm afraid Robert's helicopter is the only way out of here. You want to ride the next time he comes? Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> you really do have a thing about cops, don't you? I just have an allergy to badges of authority, that's all. Some people have an allergy to cats, I have it to badges. So, uh, the boy comes to see the girl in a helicopter, huh? Hmm. Perseus. Who's Perseus? Oh, come on. Oh, very well, I'll tell you. It seems that long ago, in the misty isles of ancient Greece, there dwelt a beautiful maiden, Andromeda. It's fact. But Andromeda was forlorn because her beauty was wasted. She'd been chained to a rock by a sea monster. Until one fine day, out of a clear blue sky, came a fellow named Perseus. Perseus of the winged feet. He had wings back there on his heels. That was before helicopters. So uh, Perseus came down, he took stock of the situation. He said, what in the world is a bird like you doing chained to a rock in the middle of the sea? Come with me. So he broke the chain, he snatched her off, and they disappeared into the sky where they probably whirl around to this very day, happily ever after. Of course, the sea monster was sore as hell. Doctor, 
If Robert is Perseus and I'm Andromeda, who's the sea monster supposed to be, my father? It's just a legend, child. Only an old legend. Well, it doesn't apply. <laughs> you know, for a minute there, I thought you were an elephant. Elephant? Come on, beat it. Get out of here. Come on. Look, beat it. Now, wait, look. I don't want to tell you your business, Charlie, but you're headed for the wrong church. You belong in a mosque, okay? Come on, beat it. Get out of here. I'm asking you for the last time, quietly like a gentleman, go away or... So, my friend, I thought today I would remind you of the story of that other great flood at the time of the beginning of the world. Hello, Joe. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Chief. Reverend? This is a real pleasure, Joe. Come, sit here. No, thank you, Chief. I promised I'd sit next to Miss Anderson. Wouldn't do to disappoint a lady, would it? And now, if I may continue... You go right ahead, Reverend. You remember how God saw that the world that he had made was full of evil men doing evil things, and he was angry with his wicked children? so angry that he made up his mind to send a great flood to wipe away every living thing off the face of the earth. Not quite everything. There was one good man, one man so good that God decided that he should live. And I think some of you know who that man was. Noah! Yeah. That's right, it was Noah. And what did God tell Noah to build? An ark. Yes. And when the great floods came, and the water rose high above the treetops and above the highest mountain, God took care of Noah and his family and brought them to safety in the ark. And now we too are to have a great flood. And you might say that we too are to have an ark. We're to be taken to safety in aeroplanes. You mean attack a simmer? Give you one to talk. Well, it's not quite usual during the service. God save Noah and the animals, too. Yes. The animals went in two by two, the elephant and the kangaroo. Yes, but you, you must think of it as a kind of story, Chief. Book not true. Oh, yes, the book is quite true, but it's the story of one man's obedience to God. We stay here with our animals. Shot over. Pender. Chief, wait a minute. Don't go. Let, let me explain a bit more. Have Looks a... like you've lost your flock, Reverend. I'm so stubborn. Well, you shouldn't have fed them all that gospel. Just what do you mean by that? They took it as gospel, didn't they? You try awfully hard to be unpleasant. Well, I have to. These they... people pulled you out of the river. They took you in as their friend, and all you can do is make cheap jokes. Well, my father's devoted his life to them, and right now he's fighting against time. So what do you want from me? You don't care about anybody but yourself, do you? No, as a matter of fact, I don't. All I ask is to be allowed to go my own way and hustle the odd dollar in the process. And I don't mind telling you, honey, I haven't had much luck in either department lately. Oh, how I wish I could help you on your way. Patience, dear. As your father would say, all in God's good time. Couldn't hold them, Julie. Oh, you'll win in the end, darling. Come on, elephant, hit the road. Get away, will you? Don't bug me. Look, you've got the wrong man. I don't want you. I don't need you. I don't even like you. Come on, now go on back to Disneyland, huh? Hit! Stay there! Hit! Stay there! 
Hold it! Hey, wait a minute! Stop! Hey, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Okay, engine. Try Hindustani. Get it, Joe. Eh, just a little language problem. Ah, Joe. Thanks. Good. Hey, Jogi, come here. All right, forget it. You wait right there now. Just wait there. Day. Aren't you glad? It's all the same to me whether you go or whether you stay. Well, that's a big improvement. A couple of days ago, there was no two ways about it. Have you looked at a map? Yeah, I figure it'll take me 10, 20 days to get where the action is. So long as you know what you're doing. Well, bon voyage. Uh, there is one little thing I wanted to talk to you about. I'm going to need food. Yes, you are. Well, uh, I thought maybe you might get it for me. You did? Yes. Look, it's none of my business, but I think a doctor would tell you that you're not fit to travel, not on your own. You want to go with me? <laughs> no, thanks. Well, I'm afraid I'll just have to take that chance, then. Sit down a minute. Come on, sit down. There. Paris. Rome. Hong Kong. Where do you want to go? What's this? This is three diamonds, all good. One of them will buy you a ticket to Paris. You're so sure I want to go to Paris? Yeah. You want to give me these for ten days' supply of food? I don't want to give them to you for anything. They're yours. Compliments to the management. Oh, I'm beginning to catch on to you, Dr. Moses. That muscle tonic isn't for real. You smuggle diamonds. Right. Oh. <gasps> you don't want them? No, thanks. You're taking quite a chance on me, aren't you? Oh, I don't think so. What makes you so sure I won't tell Robert? Go ahead, tell him. I won't. But I won't get you the food either. And what's more, if I can stop you from leaving, I will. Why, for God's sake? Call it post-operational care. Okay. But I've got to go and I've got to eat, whether you like it or not. Jiroji! Jiroji! Now look, I want you to climb up there and I want you to ring that bell louder than you've ever rung it before. For stay, ring it till your ears bleed. Deal. What the 
is going on out there? sophisticated here. I don't want you taking advantage of us. Now, there's... You're gonna have to speak up, Reverend. We can't hear you. Well, there's to be no selling. Selling? Have I soiled this gift with crass commercialism? Have I asked you for one thin dime, two nickels, for a ruble, for a rupee? You shame me, Reverend. Friends, all I ask of you is if you're moved, if you're impressed by what you see tonight, if you realize that there is some power within this universe beyond you, one small gift, just a small token of food, friends, a mango, a cabbage, a roast ox, a chicken, a small chicken with truffles on the side, a noggin of wine, just anything to please the palate of those wise and gentlemen of the East. Fire! Moses called forth when he signified the burning bush. Fire! I'm talking about fire! The infinite power of Apollo. Hey, wait a minute, just a minute. Where's everybody going? Y'all come back. Show's just starting. We've got free beer, we've got dancing girls. We... Now, come on, lady, bring that man back out again. Where are the children going? Hey! Well, so much for that. Now, come and have your supper. That was really quite a wonderful trick. Uh, maybe it was a little too much for them, but I, I liked it. <laughs> Good night. You goofed, Daddy. You really goofed. himself. Morning. Who are you, anyway? Ubi's the name. You know, like in Ubi do we do? Moses dig? Wake me when it's over. Well, that's a good one. Wake me when it's over. Man, that'd break me up. Have some breakfast. Where do you pick up all this dialogue? I pick it up here, pick it up there. There, maybe, not here. Well, you see, my papa had the reverend's job a long time ago. <laughs> but he died of a broken heart. You mean your father was the missionary here? A witch doctor. When he died, I cleared out. Wanted to know what the white man's medicine was like. Christianity, civilization. Well, I saw it. Close up. Man, I had it. You know what it's like to live eight in a room in Harlem? So you don't like white man's medicine? I don't like white men. You prefer this, a bright boy like you? They're my people, ain't they? You know what's happening in the world. They make with the big words, and they say the wind of change is blowing over Africa. Well, maybe I come back and help it along a little. I see. How about the Reverend? Does he know about this? He knows, but he don't care. He's got his Christian stuff to keep him warm. Tell me, mister, what's your racket? You got him pretty good. The last night I say, Moses, now he goofed. But I was wrong. You got them right there on the hook. Well, okay, you got them there. Now, what are you going to do with them? Do with them? <laughs> Don't look at me, Jack. I'm not moving in here. Oh, indeed. As soon as I can, I'm cutting out clean.
Pardon me, me. Matter, trouble? Well, I hope I'm in time to stop it. But, Robert, for God's sake, keep your men out of the village. I got a job to do, Mr. Anderson. I was telling you I mean business. Well, it's bad business, my boy, if you persist. Where's Julie? Is she all right? She's with the chief. She wanted to talk to him on her own. Now, please, Robert, we've done everything we can. I'm keep some calm. Sorry, Mr. Anderson. Stop a dolly. Stop a dolly. I'd make myself scarce if I were you. Don't you worry about me, General. I got troubles of my own. I'm sorry, my job. I'll him lip up. Robert, send your men away, please, before the chief sees them, or it'll be too late. It's too late now. Go back to your house. He won't see you. I think he will. Look, I've been with him all morning. I've just about got him to agree. If you try force now, you'll ruin everything. Oh, you stop pestering me. Let me get on with my job. Sasa. Stand aside. He says the chief is not to be disturbed. This is the government. The government demands to see the chief. Chief Anagako figiri na kwamba mungu. The chief is thinking and praying and can't be disturbed. Can't he? Lieutenant Fax Bennett! Quad Hora! Ha! Fax! Bennett! Charge! Chief of Hulu! I know you can hear me. I'll give you two minutes. If you're not outside in two minutes, I'm sending my men in to get you. You heard what the man said, baby. Time to go, time to... Uh-oh. You wait right here. I think you should send Julie up to the house. Yes, Robert. Julie, I really think you should. Julie isn't being sent anywhere. One minute! Hold on. Guns not necessary. Also 
shall go with us. There shall not an hoof be left behind. Who said? Well, it was Moses that said it. You course. tell us the wrong story in church. Not Noah, Moses. Well, it was another story. And Moses said, I will lead my people into a good land, flowing with milk and honey. The Lord has spoken. He will lead us. Oh, don't mind me, fellows. You just uh, go right ahead with your convention. What? What? Now, what's all this about? His name is Moses. You find him in a river like in book. He make miracle of burning bush. Moses will lead us to the promised land. Old friend, I prayed that you'd find a solution, but I never thought you'd come up with anything like this. The Lord walks in mysterious ways. Amen. Just a minute. I'd like a little word with you in private. You go, please. Look, Mr. Anderson, I'm not here to attend Sunday school. The sooner they quit Bible class and get piked, the better as far as I'm concerned. Silence! What? You wait, please. Moses talking. Well, little Miss Innocence, I may look kind of funny, but I'm not exactly crazy, you know. That's over 300 miles. Here's a chance for once in your life to do something you can be proud of. I'll swallow my pride, thank you. Chief, why don't you wise up? How long do you think it's going to take you to march those animals 300 miles? Forty years in the wilderness. Oh, no, that was another promised land. Forty days should be enough for you. Yes, please. Somebody's been filling you full of horse feathers. There is fire, there is flood, there is famine, there is pestilence, there are mountains, there are deserts, there are wild beasts to prey on your flocks. A bunch of soft-bellied missionary pilgrims like you, you wouldn't last 15 minutes. He lead us, we go. He not lead us, we not go. Well, in that case, we not go. Chief Uhulu, you've had your revival meeting. Now get your people cracking, will you? Government not worry. The Lord will perform his wonders. Moses will take us to promised land. That idea of the chief's wasn't exactly his own. Do tell. Well, I'll try not to hold it against you. Oh, Bye. no. You've got a little problem to sort out first. Later. Right now, I'm a little pressed. Though. Not so fast. You have to choose between a healthy outdoor life and a long, long stretch indoors. Robert's got such a blind spot about people who smuggle diamonds. And you'd be just the one to tell him, wouldn't you? I would. You would do that to get these people out of here? Yes. Well, you go right ahead and do it. Right. I will. Hey, wait a minute. Come back here. Well... Looks like I've been out hustled, huh? Eh? Right. What's your proposition? Honor among crooks. Okay. Chief Uhulu? Moses will lead. Look, honey, I don't want to throw my weight around. That's little... right, Jerogi. Put those in the cart and cover them up. I presume I still am your oh, fiance. Oh, Robert, please don't be silly. We've been through all this before. Here, take these. Well, who's silly? I am not interested in Mr. Moses. I couldn't care less about him. And I'm not coming back in the launch with you. I'm going with Father. No, no, Yotam. I told you no mattresses. Leave them there. Hello, honey. With we... Father, do you understand? I can't help but Joe Moses is going to be there. What do you mean? You made him go, didn't you? What did you say to him to make him go? I appealed to his Christian soul. What did you say to him to make him go? Don't ask me that. Why? Haven't I got a right to know No, Robert, I don't think you have. Oh, don't look so miserable. Oh, the hell with it. I'm a miserable woman. Well, I have to go with Father. You understand that, it's don't you? It's not your old father I'm bothered about. It's yon alcoholic vision over there that worries me. If he so much as makes a pass at you, I'll have his guts for peach brandy. I'll help you. <laughs> now, you please let me get on with my work. <laughs> Let's go!
you choose the name Moses? Well, I figured if you called yourself Moses, people wouldn't ask you what your name was before you changed it. <laughs> what was your name before you changed it? Joe. Just Joe? Just Joe. As a matter of fact, they took the name off the wagon. Won the wagon in a crap game. The original Dr. Moses tapped out. Haven't you ever wanted to stop wandering and settle down? Where? What would I do for laughs? Where did you learn those tricks with the fire? Learned that at my mother's knee, honey. She was a cooch dancer in a carnival out of Conchahawk and PA. You know Mother's Day? Well, my Mother's Day consisted of two bottles of bathtub gin every day. That's where I learned the deep respect for women that you probably admired in me. You were in a carnival? Yeah, when I was about 20, and then the manager got wise to me. What happened? Well, he had introduced me to his wife. He was taking a percentage, so I figured I'd take a little percentage, too, every time he was out of town. And one day he came back, and I had to leave town. Hope she was worth it. No, she was just another broad. Hey, look, honey, if this is uh, psychoanalysis, don't you think we ought to get comfy on the couch? Oh, you stay right where you are. What about young Perseus of the winged feet? What does he think about this, about you and me traveling together? You know, intimately. I don't think he ever gives it a thought. And neither do I. Hey, you want this? You're gonna miss it. You'll have to catch your death of cold without that. Well, you've had a nice night for it. Mm. The Reverend sure is swinging tonight, isn't he? <laughs> yes, he's very happy. You can hear it, can't you? Is that the way he sounds when he's happy? <laughs> Do you realize it's been 12 days since we started, and everything's gone fine? Aren't you pleased? Oh, I'm tickled to death. There's nothing I like better than a 300-mile stroll. Oh, you just pretend to hate everything. I can read you like a book. Oh, that's not true. There are a lot of things I like. Tell you one thing, I like pretty little blonde girls with blue eyes and pretty legs, even if they hide their legs under blankets. You're, uh, comfy down there. Yes, I'm fine. Have you been drinking? Now, why do you say that? Just because I paid you a compliment? As a matter of fact, yeah, I had a couple of belts. You sure you wouldn't rather sleep in the wagon? Of course I would. Then why don't you do it? It's all made up and waiting. Good night. Getting that woman into a man's bed, even when the man ain't dead, it's a real accomplishment, Mr. Moses. Real good beginnings. I suppose that falls in the category of praise from Caesar. You ain't fooled her yet, Mr. Moses. I ain't trying to, Professor. I don't understand you at all, Mr. Moses. And another thing, you told me he was blowing this here coop. But here you are, right here. I don't understand you at all. Yeah, that's my trouble. Nobody understands me. Mr. Moses! Mr. Moses, over here! Much water, big water! River? No water, not to move!
somebody warn us about this. Get the map, will you, Julie? You better bring the compass, too. He lived at us beside the still waters. chaps doing here? This is government property. And who are you? Never mind who I am. Who are you? My name's Moses. My name's Parkhurst. I'm chief engineer here. The CEO, you might say. That's probably the last thing I might say. But you're the fellow I want. You want me? Well, I've got to get all these people from here over to there. Does the D.O. know about this shower? D.O.? Who he? District officer. He's the I.C. at the nearest HQ. Under the D.C., of course. What's the matter with you, Charlie? You swallow a scrabble board? I don't think that's very funny, old chap. Anyway, I thought this lot were going by plane. Well, it's rather a long story, old chap. We decided to walk. Now, how do we get across? You won't. Unless, of course, you're capable of swimming it. But can we go around it? Not without wings. Not that way, at any rate. There happens to be a rather steepish gorge over there. That way, however, you will find a crossing. How far? About... 60 miles, I should say. 60 miles? We only make 10 miles in a day. Oh, well, then, the little day tour will take you about six days. You could rest on the 7th, eh, Padre? Mr. Parkhurst, we've been a long time on the road. Some of these people are old, some of them are sick. We're all tired. Dash it all, sir. That's hardly my pigeon. You may as well save your breath, Reverend. What exactly is your pigeon? The installation. Well, I hope that your pigeon drops a big, fat message right on your little pointy head. Well, of all that. The D.C. will hear about this, the whole. Who are you? 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 What's all this? I thought a chief is just calming him down. Say nothing to worry about. Yes. Leave it to Moses, he said. Moses is going to part the water. Moses is going to part nothing. You're going to have to quit brainwashing that chief. He worked that one out all by himself. Yeah, I know. Well, you got him in the groove. You're going to have to get him out of it. I'm fresh out of miracles. All right, Joe. I'll talk to him. You agree with me? I guess so. Well, we'll have to make the detour. I can't make him help us, can I? Well, can I? No, of course you can't. What do you want me to do? Hit the little weasel? I don't want to break up the jam session, but have any of you cats seen Ubi? Well, Mr. Moses, come to sit in? No, I left my mask home. You uh, doing something important? Just having some fun. Folks like to dance. And there ain't much of that in the reverend's shop. You still think you'll get them back, huh? I will, Mr. Moses. I will. Now, what's on your mind? Man, that's a crazy idea. But will you do it? Will I? Or won't I? How come you picked on me? Because it's a sneaky operation, and I just couldn't think of anybody sneakier than you. <laughs> Be careful. You're going to turn my head. Just tell me, Mr. Moses, what's in it for me? Well, as soon as we get within shouting distance of a decent saloon, I'm going to leave this outfit. Now, supposing I leave you my fire-making apparatus to play with. No witch doctor should be without one. How about that? Let's go, Daddy.
kati hiyo itakuwa really mambo makubwa sana tukarabu. Hey! Trying to do a good job, Mr. Moses. Yeah, I know. Almost too good. Let's not try that anymore. Whatever you say, Mr. Moses. Okay. Tie him up. What do you think you're doing here? Get that, that fat, disgusting thing out of here at once. Watch that talk, man. The old sow's got feelings, you know. Never mind about her feelings. Get her out at once. Do you realize these are confidential papers? You're going to pay for this. You're going to pay through the nose. Through the... Did you hear the gentleman, Emily? In all my years in admin, I... In all my years in the service... You led a very sheltered life in the service, old boy. A bright little bureaucrat like you, and you can't even handle an elephant. I suppose now you're going to tell me that you can't drain the reservoir for us. I most certainly can't. It's out of the question. Why? Because I've had my instructions. Because I've had no comfort. Oh, now, That's why don't because... you stop that? It's because you can't scratch your Aunt Emily's cat without three OKs from the H.O. That's the uh, head office. That's right. I mean... I'm not going to waste my time talking to you. I'm going to call the police. Oh, no, you're not. You're just going to call them and tell them to open all the sluice gates. And if you don't get going by the time I count five, I'm going to get Emily to step on your nose, and I mean that. But the board is coded. I, I, I can't just switch Two, on. Three. There's simply no precedent. Now, do be reasonable. Five. Emily, he is not our friend. No. 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 No, no. No, 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 no. No, no. No. Stop her. Stop her. No. Ah! Tell her to take that away. Dancer. Good elephant. Oh. All right, I'll do it. All right, Emily, that's enough. Go on, you go powder your nose. Goko, listen, Goko, open the sluice gates. One, two, three, and four. <laughs>
doesn't understand how he did it. The Bible isn't very explicit about how the Israelites did it either. What I really don't understand is why he did it. I dare say one of these days you'll find out. The mantle of the prophet is upon you. Come again, Mr. Moses. Forget it. Now look, take that thing and hide it where nobody can find it. You don't want to get drummed out of the witch doctor's union, do you? My daddy could see me now. Oh, he'd be proud. Man, you just leave me alone. Just leave me alone with these babies. And just you wait and see what I can do with them. You ought to be able to build up quite a practice. I'm getting nervouser and nervouser. How about you, Mr. Moses? Look like you're getting real dug in with my people. You figure I've worn my welcome out? Just want to say a friendly goodbye. That's all. Let me tell you something, Ubi. When I get my traveling orders, I'm taking them from Chief Uhulu himself, not from the court jester. Look to me like he's starting to fall for this holy Jonah. Like he's starting to dig being Moses. Why don't you get a little sleep, crown prince? Watch out, the wind of change doesn't give you a stiff neck. Like I say, you ain't going to leave? When I'm ready and I'm not ready. Any objections? No, no. no. Just trying to get things straight. That's all. Cross? We sure can't go around it. See the water holes right here in the middle. I figure it'll take us three or four days. It's gonna be too bad if it takes longer than that. Those cattle will just about make it. Okay, Chief? Moses say okay. Chief okay too. Okay. There's 80 miles at best. You all right? I could have sworn it. it was like somebody touched me and the door was open. You probably just left it off the latch. I guess. Maybe it was just a nightmare. Well, I'll move my bedding up here. You'll be all right. My grandfather wasn't a Cherokee Indian for nothing. You know, I can sleep with one eye open. Thank you, Joe. It's all right, Julie.
Joe. Are you there? I'm right here. Which eye have you got open? The red one. Was your grandfather really an Indian? You better believe it, honey. My grandma was Buffalo Gal. Good night, Joe. Good night, Jed. Missouri, Sasa. somebody in the wagon last night. How do you know? They took the map and the compass. Missouri, Sasa. Waiting for them to close up. It's getting serious, isn't it? They're saying that you're a false prophet. But if they listen to you, they'll die. We'll be saying that they've lost faith. The real Moses was able to call down manna from heaven and all about how badly they need water. Wonder what in Moses? Where they must be? Yandu? Moses? Is Ubi telling them that he can lead them to water? How did you know? I know Ubi. Mr. Moses.
Julie? She, she is under house arrest, as you might say. Julie, go get Joe. That's right, you see. If you can find him. Ah, he made a pretty sight. Him and the elephant, riding off into the darkness. I just wonder now, where can he be heading for? Got Joe. He wouldn't go off without telling us. It's not like him. It seems characteristic to me, Mr. Anderson. The rat and the sinking ship. Oh, that's not true. Joe's been wonderful, hasn't he, Father? The tribe would do anything for him. Mm, so I can hear. By the way, his name's not Moses. It's Jackson, and is wanted by the police. He's a diamond smuggler, I know. Oh, so that's how you yes, persuade him. Yes, that's how. Thank you and good night. That should look great in the papers, eh? District officer's fiancé aids criminal to escape. Oh, it's a fine time to worry about your publicity. You've got hold of the wrong end of the stick, my boy. Julie stopped him escaping. Well, that's only half true. We made a pact that when he got us there, he could go free. You've made a pact with him? Oh, well, that solves everything. I can wire the governor general. We'll all take a month's holiday. I've got a warrant for his arrest here, but we can stick that in the luggage. I have not made a pipe with him. You know, he said to me once, district officers and cops, it's the same thing. I can smell them a mile off. Did he? Well, he smelled me several miles off. That's why he's on the run. I don't know why he's gone, but it's he's certainly you not down. because he's, he's afraid of you. Chief down, he's at the whole tribe down. He didn't run away. I know him better than that. So it would seem. <laughs> Okay, baby, let's go. Where is she? In the wagon. Joe, 
Jill, are you in there? Yes, Joe. Are you all right? I'm just dandy. I knew you'd come back. Prodigal returns, and what a welcome. I'll say this for your congregation, Reverend, there's never a dull moment. And they lost you, Joe. They lost their faith. You're getting to be just like your daughter, Rev. You blame me for everything. Well, look who's here out of a clear blue sky. You come here often? Hello, Dr. Moses. Glad to see you back. Thank you, General. You make me glad to be back. Eddie, Ambosha. Old friend, are you hurt? Moses smashed false God, and the true God was exceeding angry with his children. That's what I told them. That's right, Chief. Roll arm into them. Where's yon devil who started it? Who'll be in good hands? Fair enough, but he'll have to answer to the government, eh? No rough justice. Thou shalt not kill. Commandment number six. Right. Oh, Joe, why did you go away? Well, I figured it was only a question of time before we ran out of water, and that's when Ubi'd make his move. Unfortunately, he jumped the gun on me. Did you find a water hole? No, as a matter of fact, Emily did. You know, it came to me as a flash in the middle of the night. The old sow's been operating for 80 years without a compass. She's never run out of water yet. Joe, when we get to the water hole, uh, you've got to leave us. Oh, you mean I find the water and then I'm out of a job? It isn't safe for you to stay. You mean Ubi? Don't you worry about Ubi. He's taken care of. I mean Robert. Robert? Oh, now, come on. Don't tell me that Perseus is jealous. No. Well, possibly he is. But he shouldn't be, should he? Not unless you've been taking advantage of me while I've been asleep, he shouldn't. Come on, what is it? He knows about the diamonds. You told him? No, Joe. He told me. He has a warrant for your arrest. Wants to put you in jail. How about that? Well, it'll give me a chance to catch up on my reading, brush up on my Greek mythology. Andromeda. Wouldn't suit you to be chained, Joe. Better leave as soon as you can. You know something? Up until just now, if you'd told me that, you wouldn't be able to see me for dust. But after what happened when I did go away, I, uh... Well, I figure I've got to see these people home. Whatever. Naturally, I despise myself for my weakness, and I shall do penance at my first opportunity by drinking myself to death. Between you and me, old lady, I think I'm due for a belt.
Wake up, Mr. Moses, if you don't want to die in your sleep. I've got a king-size bone to pick with you. And you've been real mean to me. Right in front of my own people. Hey, look, uh, that thing's not for kids, you know. Go on, put it down. Man, you're out of your mind. Just as long as it's pointing at you, you've taken the orders from me. Okay, Professor Deal. Deal is right. And I got all the aces. What's your problem, Ruby? I just want my people to see their Mr. Moses scared. But they've just seen it. Just want them to know who's the number one man around here. Go! Where are you going, Mr. Moses? I didn't tell you to move. I just wanted to check up on my fire insurance. And that's a good one, too. Sure gonna miss your little jokes when you're no longer with us. Well, it's nice to know. Gone, but not forgotten. What's your story, Uvi? My story is you're going to die. But you're going to have to wait for it. I could have killed you when you were sleeping. But that would not have been artistic. Go to bed, Mr. Moses. But don't sleep too deep. I'll come back. And I'll keep coming back until my people hate the sight of you. He's sick. He's out of his mind. We'll have to try to draw his fire and run him out of gas. It's our only chance. You head him off around that way. Zungu Kahuku. Don't you move, Julie. We'll be back. Ubi! Ubi, come on back. I want to talk to you. Talk to me with higher pretty. Look, I've got a little proposition for you. When you hear it, you won't be able to resist it. Who are you kidding? You ain't a man of your word. Or you would not still be here. Ruby, come on out of there before you hurt yourself. So they're behind you. journey is in 
sight, and we ask you to hear our prayer of thanksgiving. We are thankful for your care and for your protection as we wandered in the wilderness, ever comforted by the knowledge that you were guiding our steps and that you had given us the gift of faith which made our darkness bright. And finally, we give thanks, Almighty Father, for the devious and sometimes improbable means by which we were brought through the valley of the shadow into the promised land. Amen. Amen. Come with me. My courage is yours. Moses, our leader, like in the book. Moses crossed the promised land, flowing with milk, also honey. Hey, wait a minute. Get off that, Moses. That's not for you. Inspector, I forgot all about you. If we're going to follow the book, we're going to play this biblical charade out to its bitter end. <laughs> you don't know much about your illustrious ancestor, do you, laddie? Poor old Moses. He led the Israelites through the wilderness for 40 years, and when he got to the River Jordan, blow me down, but they wouldn't give him an entry permit. Who's they? District officers, cops. They all smell alike. Truth is, they couldn't bear the responsibility of taking care of him. The prophet was a dead loss, as you might say. Hmm? You mean you're letting me off the hook? If you go back that way, remission for good conduct. Well, thanks, brother. That's okay. Maybe I owe you something. Hmm? I only wish you did. Uh-oh. Don't look now, but the owl and the pussycat have just landed. James, it's the governor. I better get down there and start clicking my heels. Chop, chop. I'd make myself scarce if I were you. You not come? Not come to promised land? Well, Chief, I guess they just don't figure I'm quite ready for integration. Not understand integration. Well, you're not the only one, Father. Believe me. Later. Chief, very sorry. Remember, our home is your home. I'll remember that. Well, Reverend, you just keep practicing away with those dominoes. Where'll you go, Joe? Some place where a bum can sit down with his elephant and have a quiet drink without being bugged. You don't need me to tell you how much you've done for us. No, it's a two-way street, Reverend. Well, there's Florence Nightingale. Well, I guess I better go over and say hail and farewell, ciao, or Wiedersehen. She'll be very sorry to hear you say it. Goodbye, my boy. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Well, I guess you've heard the news. Perseus has sprouted wings all over. Told me he was going to let you go. No, I've grown used to you. Well, you've grown. You have a wonderful way with people, Joe. You know it's right I should marry him. Of course. What else? Everyone has to feel secure. I feel secure with Robert. I can trust him. I can believe that. I guess it all seems dull to you. Marriage, children, staying in one place. Pretty dull, yeah. I guess it's silly to think it could be any other way. Ridiculous. Well, that's that. Haven't you got anything to say to me, Joe? Yeah, just one thing. What am I going to do for laughs? Joe.
understand, don't you? You tried. It hasn't been easy. Oh, it's crazy. I'm probably wrong, but I have to. I suppose you can never explain it to Robert, but please try. I just have to. Kind of lost, aren't you? I'm not lost. Where do you think you're going? With you? With me? A minute ago, you were going to marry Robert. One minute ago. That was the idea. Well, what's changed? What happened to the other end of the rainbow? You know, the, the fireside cat and the family mortgage, the uh, front porch and the fat baby on your knee. Hey, wait a minute. You don't think I'm going to change? No. No? That's what I said. I kind of like you the way you are. Well, you better take a good long look over your shoulder, honey. Back there is security, home, family, everything you've ever wanted. Yes, but... But what? What would I do for laughs?